Today we have an update for DaVinci Resolve. This is the beta 2 update for uh, Resolve 19. Now, these aren't the kind of updates that have tons of new features. We just had that with the initial launch of 19, uh, but these are important to know. Um, there are a few specific things I wanna show you in this video, but I also wanna make sure you're all up to date um, with how you can find out the most information about these smaller updates, especially while it's still, you know, shortly after that initial, uh, initial beta release, so this being the beta 2 release. And the first thing I want to go over is the few different places where information actually exists for stuff like this. You might have seen this update from somewhere uh, like Blackmagic Design own social media where they post it here on Twitter. And if you follow this download link, it takes you to the main support page for Resolve. This is fantastic. Uh, if you don't know, you can search, you know, all their projects, but this is also where you have access to the entire back catalog of individual versions of DaVinci Resolve. If you ever need to uh, roll back to a past version of Resolve or for whatever reason you want to download a past version, you can just, uh, with Resolve selected, scroll back and hey, uh, grab a Resolve version from 2014 if you want to. It's wild. But for what we are looking at, um, uh, we have this beta 2 right at the top, and if you click read more, you'll get this pop-up, but this is interesting for updates like this. Because all of the information in this post is exactly the same as what we had from the beta 1 release. This is just looking at what is new in Resolve 19, not what is new in Resolve 19 beta 2. 19 is still the big thing, um, but stuff did happen in beta 2. And to find that, you wanna head over to the forum. And if you head to the general section, head over to DaVinci Resolve, under the announcement section, anytime there's even a small update like this, uh, sometimes shortly after, but sometimes immediate, um, we have this Resolve public beta beta 2 post. You click that and you have specific updates in this one small update. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on screen for a bit uh, for you to peruse over. Um, I'll also come back to this while I talk about stuff because I want to talk about two specific things. And to do that, I am hopping in Resolve. Uh, the first was a little hard to compare to the last version, uh, but I believe it is about uh, this button in the viewer now where we have basic safe area guides you can toggle on and off right from the edit page viewer. Now this is interesting because these were available, but they were previously in the uh, view dropdown where you have safe area. These controls are now completely grayed out. They don't overwrite anything. They're just like, I guess, useless now, but those have been moved to the viewer um, where I do think people are much more likely to uh, uh, interact with them. We do have some social media overlays, which I uh, I'm not super sure the best case those would be used, but stuff like safe area and like even like a center point, always super useful to know and really easy to toggle those on all or all on or off with just a click now. But the next thing I want to talk about is what I think will actually uh, help the most people from getting tripped up. So new in Resolve 19, we had a suite of uh, audio tools, lots of them being really cool AI audio tools. Now, most of these are exclusive to DaVinci Resolve Studio. I believe the Ducker is in the free version as well. But these controls are interesting uh, because in 18.5, we had the voice isolator and dialogue leveler, and those were added, uh, those are able to be added on a clip level. So if you click a clip, you have those options here, uh, but you didn't see the new options like music remixer or some of the other stuff. To do that, you had to uh, make sure you had to click um, in this part of the timeline to click on the track itself. And then at the track level, you could see those options and turn them on and stuff like that. But now if you just click on an individual clip in the inspector, you have these little controls up here. So all of these audio controls will affect just this, this specific clip. But if you click this little toggle, now we are on the track level. You can change the entire volume. You have voice isolator, dialogue leveler, dialogue separator, music remixer, and the ducker. Again, uh, a lot of these do require a studio, um, but even without that, I, had, uh, I knew several people who had Resolve Studio updated to 19 and still missed these because they were looking for them you know, among their normal tools. Uh, good to know these are also available over on the Fairlight page, but they're tricky <laughs> because you see some of them here on my mixer, but you do have to these come to these dots and come to visible track effects and select which ones you want to be visible here before you even toggle them on. Um, so these effects do appear in a few different locations, but you just have to 
make sure you know how to make them visible in those few different locations. All right, sitting back on this clip, um, we have some interesting stuff. These are the kind of updates that do see like small individual bug fixes that I think a lot of people probably haven't run into, but it's very good for those people who have run into those issues that they're being fixed. I know there was an issue um, with Mr. Alex Tex, I believe his magic zoom preset that sort of got uh, an issue in Resolve 19. And, and I think one of these cleared this up. Maybe this one with displaying uh, nested inspector controls, maybe that was what he needed. If you found a new specific issue in Resolve 19 um, and you wanna know if this small update clears that up, check this first. You might be surprised, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Ooh, smaller uh, helpful thing you might notice as well. We have a new user prompt when upgrading older projects. I just ran into this uh, chest testing this out. Resolve does function a little differently because it is database driven, but if you have an individual project um, that was from like an older database and you're working in a newer one, you will now get a prompt saying, hey, um, we are upgrading this for you or do any of like the funky like project file stuff that you might see in some other software where you end up with like multiple, multiple copies anyway. But if you were curious about this new small beta 2 update, um, here is what you're getting. Those are some of the small highlights to look forward to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.